the photoelectric effect. Really, really cool. Here we go. So in the photoelectric effect, what we are going to do is we are going to take um, some type of, we're going to use some type of light. Okay, so this will just be like a normal light. And we get different types of light that we are going to use. We're going to use the normal light that we see around us, like orange, red, yellow, blue, indigo, green, violet, you know, all of the normal visible colors that we know about. But then you also get different types of light, um, which would be things like uh, UV, ultraviolet radiation. So we will also use that in this chapter. Okay, so we have some type of light. And then what we also need in this chapter is we need some type of um, metal. So we need a metal. And that metal can be any type of metal like copper, zinc, silver, any metal, guys. The reason is, is that if we can remember from grade 10, we know that metals have electrons that are able to move. The electrons are able to move around. Your teacher would have called it a sea of delocalized electrons back in grade 10. Um, and so these little black dots over here, these are all going to be electrons. Okay. And so that is the starting condition for this chapter. We need light and we need a metal. Okay. And what we're going to do, it's quite cool. We're going to take the light and we're going to shine the light on the metal and we will be able to do something by shining the light on that metal okay what we're going to talk about on this slide let me get my other pen quickly okay what we're going to talk about on this slide is this light over here we should remember oh no we haven't done this before i mean you might remember that light travels as a wave Okay, but what we're going to look at in grade, in grade 12 is that this light has energy. Okay, so let's say that the light shines like this. Onto the surface of the metal. This light has energy. Remember that? So each of these little pieces over here. Each of these little things are called photons. Okay, that's a photon. This one's also a photon. And this one's also a photon. So all these little things are called photons. Okay. And these photons have energy. Okay. To be able to calculate the amount of energy in the photon, we are going to use the formula E equals to HF, okay? Where H is something called Planck's constant. You might have heard about the famous scientist. Um, I don't know what his first name is, but Planck. Uh, Planck's constant is a very famous um, constant in science. And it has a particular value, and that value is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Um, in the IEB curriculum, they sometimes only use 6.6. .6, so just check what your curriculum uses. But for the CAPS curriculum, it's usually going to be 6.63 .6 times 10 to the minus 34. F is frequency. And that's always measured in hertz. That's measured in hertz. Sometimes they are okay. So so pretty much, if you can, if you know what the frequency, if you know what the frequency of the light is, then you can calculate how much energy it is. Oh, I should also just say here, E is the energy of the light. E is the energy of the light, and that is always measured in joules. Okay. Now, sometimes they're not going to give you the frequency. Sometimes they're going to give you the wavelength. Okay. So if you are given wavelength, 
which is some people like to call it lambda, then you're rather going to use this formula. C is equal to F lambda, where um, C is the speed of light in air, which is always equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then lambda is the wavelength, and that is measured in meters. So guys, what you would do is you would use um, you would use this formula over here if they give you wavelength. You would use that to calculate the frequency. So you could say frequency is equal to C over lambda or wavelength. And then once you have the frequency, you could then plug it into that over there. So what some teachers actually do is they combine all of that into one. So they go EMF, not EMF, Kevin. <laughs> it's energy. Energy is equal to H. And then they'll change the frequency for C over lambda. You can do that if you want. I don't really do that too often. But if your teacher does that, they might even write it as HC over lambda. Okay. I want you to, all I want you to know for now is that the light has energy. Each of these um, little areas here is called a photon, okay? And that photon energy is calculated using this formula over here. If they don't give you the frequency, but they rather give you the wavelength, then you rather use this formula over here to calculate the wave, to calculate the frequency. Okay, so if you understand everything so far, Fantastic. I've got a little summary on the next slide in case you've missed anything. Here we go. So here's the summary. Um, we know that the, uh, the amount of energy is calculated using HF, where H is 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. And then sometimes we will also use this formula over here. And we say here that E is the energy of the light. H is Planck's constant, F is the frequency, C is the speed of light, and um, lambda is wavelength. Okay.